First Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because the adversary, your devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about doing what? What is he doing? He's seeking whom you devour. I mean, whom he may devour. The enemy operates through what? How does he operate? Fear. Fear. He operates through fear. How many of you know that to be true? Yeah, when you get scared, that's when the devil comes. Or the devil makes you do things so you'll be scared. Oh, yeah. Every gang member got the spirit of fear. They always scared. Scared they're going to die. Scared somebody going to... Scared the police going to come. You know, when you're doing wrong, you live in the spirit of fear. Oh, I'm preaching here. Yeah, when you creeping and sneaking, ducking and dodging and peeping and hiding, you in fear. Amen. When you in secret sin, you in fear. <laughs> Getting it off the screen real quick. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. On your phone, you got a privacy screen so thick, you can't even see. People, people pick up your phone, think it's off. Oh, man, your battery died. Oh, okay. Let me put on my x-ray vision glasses. Man, you got all that going on. What are you hiding? <laughs> Put on a whole helmet with the light, bring it down, turn it on. Dude, who are you talking to? You need to get off the phone with them. <laughs> man, but man, if you in, in sin, if you creeping and crawling, you got to hide stuff, you, the, the spirit of fear is there. Fear of getting busted. Can I preach it here? The enemy operates through this. Whatever type of fear it is, it can be used by the devil. Now, the Bible just told us, First Peter, Peter just told us, as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's walking around. A roaring lion is a fear monger. Let me turn on my special effect. The roaring lion is a fear monger. <laughs> His roar is used. I almost had Simba up here. But I said, nah, they, they wouldn't recover. Let me get a generic line. His roar is used to scare hundreds of animals. Now think about this. If all those hundreds of animals would stand their ground, the lion would have no chance. I mean, thousands. Have y'all ever seen the wildebeest? It's thousands. And they all just running. Like, get together, y'all. Won't y'all just get together? They hear that roar, everybody's, they just out of there. They all see themselves in the lion's mouth. He ain't gonna get me. Baby trying to keep up. You ain't just leave the baby out. No. Oh, I have another one. <laughs> thousands and thousands. Y'all seen them. That many animals. Man, if y'all all just turned around the line and be like, oop. <laughs> animals with horns. Y'all got, uh, what you call them things? Antlers. Turn around. <laughs> Man, whatever. That's the king of the jungle. I'm out of here. You ain't seen the Wizard of Oz? I'm gone. <laughs> Only thing I stand up is them old raggedy hyenas. Because they devils. <laughs> They'll stay and fight. But his roar is used to scare hundreds of animals into believing that they are in danger. Fear is a spirit. It's a deceptive spirit. It does what a roaring lion does. Makes you think you're in danger. Even when you're not. Even when all you got to do is stand up. 
You got something better than antlers. You have the sword of the spirit. You have the shield of faith. The breastplate of righteousness. You're armed and ready. The roaring lion shouldn't scare you. It's just a roar. The Bible's already told you he can't eat you. He can't harm you. Fear is a spirit. So that means it is countered by what? 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Power. Power and what? Power. And what? Power. You know, the person don't have these three things, then they don't have the spirit of God. Spirit of God is going to give you power, love, and a sound mind. That's the test. You come at me without all three of these, I know something is wrong with your spirit. I will preach in this place. Yeah. So you don't come with the power of the Lord, the power of the Holy Ghost. Boy, I can just blink and folks just start falling out. And I can knock you out with my jacket. You got the power of the Holy Ghost, but you don't love everybody. You old hateful demon. Oh, you got the power. I, I, I. I mean, you can make anything happen in, in the church. <laughs> then you got... <laughs> You got the love. You love everybody, but you crazy. (laughs) We don't have all three. (laughs) Crazy. Wonderful person. We like you, but sometimes. (laughs) Who am I talking to? Yeah, I need you to have all, look at somebody and say, you need to have all three. Power, love, and what? A sound mind. Can I preach today? All right. Power! Power! Bring some of them songs back. God's power can cast out the spirit of fear. Do y'all believe that? God's power, because as soon as I felt this fear coming in my life, and I walked around for a few hours with this fear, I drove home and talked to my wife, and just it, it was there. And I know I just I was getting weak and whack as the time ticked away. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I gotta address this. So I need the power of the Holy Ghost to come and deal with this. God, I need you to come and deal with this. I need the root of it dealt with. I, I, this got to stop because I'm not going to walk around here after all these years and, and, and start feeling like this toward the, toward the end of it all. So no, Lord, no, no. I know you better than that. I've seen what you've done. You brought all them old tapes back for me to see what you did. You did. I mean, come on. Y'all thought it was a coincidence? It was really amazing. And I was like, well, Lord, the, you know, the folk don't want to hear it now. And they're like, oh, yeah, they don't want to hear nobody now. Nobody's trying to hear nothing now. But what they want to hear, it's your ears. The Bible said it was going to get like that. You thought you was going to be the stuff forever, then you wasn't reading the Bible. Jesus had, when he first started, he had to feed a multitude of 5,000. But when it ended, there was 12. Can I preach in here? So the Bible encourages me because I can find what I do in the Bible. The same, oh, where, where, where was I? I didn't read the scripture. Okay. He protects those that are in him and those that desire his protection. So God's power can cast out the spirit of fear. If you desire his protection, he will do what? Protect you. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and do what? Do what? Guard you against who? The evil one. You want to be guarded against the evil one? God can do it. This is the same, I mean, this same power 
leads and guides us to not tempt God with our desires. And I hate when people say, you can't tempt God. He's not saying it like that. He said, don't tempt the Lord thy God, meaning you don't go do stuff to make yourself scared. You don't go do stuff to get the spirit of fear and then come to the Lord and cast it out. Uh oh. Yeah, you don't watch the Exorcist Marathon. The uncut version, the version they filmed in hell. He, they dug a hole and got the camera way down in there and filmed a. They got outtakes you ain't seen before. You can't even watch them with your regular eye. You gotta put a mirror behind you and look at that. You can't look directly at it. <laughs> what? Lord. That ain't 3D, that's just D, dimension. <laughs> yeah, you don't go do that and then can't sleep at night. Oh, Father, I guess you want me to pray. No, I don't want you to pray. I want you to quit watching that foolishness and scaring yourself. I was up all night. I guess the Lord needed to talk. <laughs> he was scared. <laughs> Yes, God is speaking. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord, looking at you like. So don't, don't, you don't do it. Don't tempt the Lord. Hey, me and my wife was, she, we were coming back from the thing last night and some crazy car, like a couple of cars up. Just got the spinning around, hit one side, then went and hit the other side on the freeway. Oh, yeah. You know, we was in the new car. So I'm like, Riba ba shanta, shanta. Oh, somebody there. Oh, you better turn this thing. Get it over here. I didn't say it out loud. I didn't want to startle her because she was driving, but in my heart of hearts. <laughs> speak to the mountain that that vehicle is a mountain speak mm. but anyway he was just acting a fool or whatever and then went to one side and this car was coming as fast I mean just fast couldn't avoid him and just pow just hit him all this happened right in front of us so the the the, the, the person that was doing all that left and, and exited off the freeway so they followed them. Now this is downtown Fort Worth over there by 28th Street. They gonna follow this car off the freeway down into the depths of old Fort Worth. You know there's no street lights, nothing. That's tempting God right there. That's, that, that's tempting. You want God to follow you down in there. Finna put God to the test. Oh, no, bro. I will deal with these, these, these dents myself. <laughs> Obviously, somebody is big and bold if they hit, you hit them and they keep going. They're not even concerned about their own vehicle? And you're going to follow them in the depths of darkness? <laughs> no, nah, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You don't do that. You don't, you, you don't tempt God like that. You just call uh, Chris Paul them and you just wait on the side of the freeway. Stay far. Or the general, you know, he can show up anywhere. He's animated. He just up here on the side of the street. Him and Shaq. <laughs> you don't be following nobody down in, down in the valley and quoting scriptures. Yea, though I drive through the valley and shadows of death, I will fear no evil. You scared because you talking loud. You can tell somebody's scared when they quote scriptures loud. I will fear no evil. <laughs> you know you've done that before. You know you've done that before. And whenever a demon manifests in anybody, it gets real loud, don't it? In the name of Jesus, in his name of The 
devil be like, man, I ain't deaf. I'm dirty, but I ain't deaf. <laughs> You're scared when you get to talking loud. But you don't tempt God. That's tempting God, trying to make God do something for you when you don't have no business doing that. Y'all, y'all got a good picture of that? I think I laid it out pretty plain. Did I? Okay. Brought it all the way down to understanding. First Thessalonians 5 and 22. Abstain from what? All the prince of evil. So if it's evil, leave it alone and you won't get the spirit of fear. I don't understand, folks. Your life is a wreck and you still messing with evil stuff. All on the website with the lost books of the lost and reading. Y'all need to quit all this Googling and reading. <laughs> lost books of the lost. I ain't reading that. <laughs> First of all, the book is lost. And then the lost lost it. That means you read nothing. Why did I have to explain that? What's up wrong with me? Okay. The Holy Spirit gift. Is this the first slide? Y'all enjoying this? Yeah. Hey, man, ain't no game today. Let me take my time. I got a lot to let out. I done had a rough week. Sometimes you just start praying for the whale. Put me in the belly. I want to tell them nothing else. And they should have listened. Holy Spirit gives us power over fear when we put our trust in who? In God. This trust is based on the idea that he is in control. Therefore, we do not what? Have fear. So I'm going to tell you what happens. Y'all put this stuff and y'all trivialize it in songs and it don't mean nothing. And so they just singing it. He ain't in control of them. That was their number one song. Encanto, God is encanto. Ooh. None of them syllables require a tongue. None of them. You can say God is in control without your tongue. Why you needed to sing that? Why is it out? But they sing it and, and music trivializes it to where it don't mean nothing. You know how I know? Was, was the devil singing R&B in heaven? You think the devil was singing his own song that he wanted to sing about himself in heaven? Do you honestly believe he was up there, the head of God's choir, God's music? He was obviously singing God's music, but his heart wasn't in line with what he was singing. That's why the Bible said, their mouths draw close to me, but their Gay hearts. It ain't just gay, it's all of it. You ain't thinking about God when you're singing it. I done been on the road with musicians. Oh my, they did worse, they worse than civilians. They worse than regular people. But we'll get up and have everybody crying and weeping. Can't even stand up. Oh, the spirit is so thick. Because the devil was doing that. I mean, what part of deception don't you? Who are we talking about? You will feel something if he's singing good enough. If his music is good enough. You start feeling something. And, ooh, I mean, he must be right. He must be all right with God. How could God move like this? Music has that power. Because at the Luther concert, it's the same move, the same feelings. At the Beyonce, let me bring it up to date. The Beyonce, that ain't even up to date, but it's closer. The Beyonce concert, there's a move in there. It feels like 
This must be. Look at somebody say, don't be deceived. <laughs> I'm preaching. Psalms 27 and 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I what? Fear. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I what? Be afraid. So the Holy Spirit gives us power where we don't have to fear. Can I keep going? Love. It gives us love. God's love casts out fear. I said that in the video. Oh my gosh, this was like 1999. And I said, the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is fear. Because of his love for us, we know that he will protect us from the enemy. First John 4 and 18. There is no what? This is why the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is fear. There's no fear in love. There's hate in love. Uh-oh. Somebody like, oh, see, there you go. Yeah, there is. Like, you got to have affections with somebody to truly hate them. You got to let them in your heart first. You can't hate nobody you don't know. <laughs> so there's no fear of love, but perfect love does what? Cast out fear. Because fear hath what? Torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Oh, I love the Bible. You know the Bible's talking to you this morning? You that are afraid, afraid to move forward, whatever it is. Move forward in the Lord. Take your position in the earth of who God called you to be. You're afraid to do it. That's not of God. It means you don't love him enough. People that struggle to be loved in the natural, this is your problem, will usually struggle to understand God's love based on superfluity and not agape, unconditional love. So because you didn't grow up being loved the way you need to be loved, or because you got into a relationship too young, you didn't understand it, and so you got hurt, something happened to you, and so you begin to base love on actions of people, and you can't understand agape love, the just cause love. So now you struggle. In relationship, you struggle to love. You struggle to love your husband, your wife. You struggle to get married because you just can't love. Umpteen relationships. That's a lot of them. And none of them ended in marriage because you struggle with love in the natural. Well, if you struggle with love in the natural, you're going to struggle with love in the spirit and you're going to carry around the opposite of love, which is what? Fear. Because if you don't love in the natural and you struggle to love, how you, how you going to struggle to love folks you can see, but master loving a God you can't see? You're going to treat God like you treat people. You're not going to trust God and trust if you can't trust people. First John 4 and 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is what? Love. Believing that we receive material things because of love hinders us and causes us to overload ourselves. And this births fear. So this is what happens usually in divorce and divided homes when a parent, when the parents are separate from the child and the child comes then each parent has to kind of compete to show the child how much they love them, and they do it by giving them things. So then the child grow up associating things with love. So then they come to God, and they want things. Make me famous, Lord. Enlarge my borders, Lord. The prayer j -Bass. Enlarge my territory, Lord. Give me a car, give me a house, give me stuff, Lord. That way I know you love me. You got to get past that. Because love is not based on what's given to you. Bible said the poor man was in heaven looking down at the rich man. True 
true agape love cast out fear because love is not based on what? Material gain. 1 Corinthians 13 and 7. Love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things. And here's the one that the folk, this is how you tell them folks have, don't have love. It endures what? So it ain't based on what is given. It makes it through times of plenty and times of nothing. It endures. Sound mind. Woo! Hard to love if you don't have a sound mind, Jack. When a person is afraid, they are chemically imbalanced and cannot think soundly. That's what fear is. That's why when you watch a horror movie and the monster's coming, they don't think soundly. Falling and running in the stuff and y'all all yelling, don't go in that door, don't go in that door. They go in that door because they ain't thinking soundly. Monster chasing them. They just want to stop the movie and say, look, you come in here and let the monster chase you. Let's see what decisions you'll make on the fly. Because when you're in fear, your mind ain't working right. It's a chemical imbalance. That's that feeling you get of scared. The scared feeling, heart skipping, beating out your chest, lightheaded, dizzy, that, that means something chemically is going on in your body to show you fear. What it really is, is it's your adrenaline getting ready. It's all kicking in and getting ready to make you get away from whatever's scaring you. You got to think quick. Right? Some of y'all slow all the time. Yeah, get dressed slow. Oh, wake up in the morning slow. Late to church slow. Late to work. Oh, just, I mean, folk got to punch you in when you're not there. Just late. Late, slow, late. Late, just slow, late. Oh, yeah, let, let a monster get after you. <laughs> yeah, that adrenaline kick in. That chemical <laughs> reaction <laughs> propels you. You'll be somewhere else before you know it. How did I get here, this, get here this fast with my slow self? It's a chemical imbalance. And it messes with your mind because now all the blood is going to do something else and your brain don't have that much to work with. So you're not going to make the best decisions being fearful. Amen. Now I got some doctors in here. They'll vouch for me. This is why people make erratic decisions when they are gripped by fear. Yeah, you're afraid your life ain't gonna turn out right. You go to drinking. That's an erratic decision. You know better. You know it's not a good idea. But you do it because your mind ain't right. doctor tell you, I'm going to put you on this prescription and then I'm going to put this prescription with this one because this one's going to need this one to help it. And your whole mind, everything is telling you, don't do that. Just go work it out. But you say, no, nah, I'm going to go on and take it. You're making an erratic decision because you gripped by fear. I know I'm preaching. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Casting down imaginations. Every high thing that exhausts itself against what? The knowledge of God. This is what we're supposed to do with the power of God. Then it says, bringing into captivity what? Every thought. All the unsound thoughts we got to bring into captivity and make them obey Christ. That's if you want to defeat fear. The spirit of fear is psychological and spiritual. It can make you picture things a certain way based on sheer feeling and not realistic perception. You can be scared and see stuff the wrong way. Have you ever done that? Been afraid of something, then once you did it, you was like, oh man, that was all in my mind. Fear will do that. It'll draw images and everything. Make you think. Amen. i guys come talk to me and I tell them, hey man, I need to meet with you. We, we need to talk about something. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? I said, I'm going to talk to you about it. Hey, you can't give me a hint. Dude, dude, we'll talk about it later. I mean, we're going to set up a time and talk. And then when I meet with him, man, I'm just trying to plan 
a birthday party for Landon. I, 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 I want to know, man. What, what's somebody? Woo, Lord. I thought you. I, I, I thought I had done. And I thought, yeah. <laughs> but you just draw it. Fear will do that. It'll draw images in your mind. You've pictured a whole scenario that's not even true. Because of fear. Fear did that. Not that you're afraid of me. you afraid that I know what you did. That you didn't tell. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> That's that ducking and dodging. <laughs> you don't want to be about that life. Amen. So, we got to bring all our thoughts into captivity. The spirit of fear is psychological, though. It can make you picture things a certain way based on sheer feeling and not realistic perception. This is how the devil thrives in fearfulness. The devil can't make nothing happen. He can't. He, he has to use you to make it happen. The devil ain't making you do anything. Right? But if he can create the right mindset, you'll do it. It's all psychological. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the what? So your mind has to be renewed so you won't carry this, this fear that the enemy used to manipulate you. Renew your mind in the spirit so you can prove that it, uh, what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. God's spirit comes to calm us and easily entreats us to teach us how to operate in his ways in spite of what? In spite of how we feel. Fear is the opposite of faith. So when you have the spirit of fear, you lack what? Faith. I mean, don't they go together? You're scared to do it. You lack faith. Scared to move when God tells you to move. You lack faith. Scared to trust God. Peter stepped out on the water. But then he started sinking when he lost faith. And he got scared, the Bible said. Fear came, and fear erased faith. He stepped out with faith, but he saw the winds and the waves and got fearful. And he began to sink. Can I preach in here? Summary! Man, this was a good message. I didn't even mention Halloween, did I? Halloween! comes to promote the spirit of fear. I mean, this is about much more than Halloween. The movies, the celebrations, the costumes, etc., all represent the devil's spirit of fear. Being fearful opens us up to the enemy's playground and allows him access to our thoughts and what? Feelings. This is why the Halloween season is so wicked and demonic. It is a time when things that scare us are celebrated and enjoyed as if they are just entertaining us. But the devil knows that if he can birth fear in us, he can have control over our minds and thoughts so that we are fearful of our own what? That's what the devil's after, your future. Look at somebody say, he's after your future. That's what he's after. He ain't worried about right now. He's after your future. He wants to sabotage your future with fear. Because if you're fearful, you won't move forward. You'll be stuck. He's after your future. We will begin to doubt our own plans for our families, our careers, and aspirations, and our, even our own abilities when fear comes. Once we start doubting ourselves, we will begin to be discontent and fearful of others' perception. So you doubt yourself, then you start worrying about how others see you. Then you got to do stuff to try to make others see you better. Now you've totally lost God. Now you're on a mission about you. Doubt causes us to mask our fears and cover up our true selves, which makes it very hard for us to be helped or encourage. It's hard to help somebody that's covering something up. And you can't even break through. You're trying to help them and say, hey, man, won't you just let me help you with that? Oh, Doc, I know. Uh, 
It ain't about knowing. Let me try to help you apply, help you apply what you know. I, I know how. Well, won't you just let me talk to you? I, I mean, I, I know. Fear produces all of this. Many today suffer from anxiety, depression, hopelessness because of the spirit of fear. Many turn to sin and substance abuse to mask their feelings of doubt and fear. The devil is able to manipulate us and take us off God's course through the spirit of fear. So many have fallen away from the faith because fear took their faith away. We must never give place to fear. Look at somebody and say, never give place to fear. When we are fearful, we must pray and ask God by faith to rebuke this spirit from our lives and keep us believing and receiving from him. Pray for his power, his love, and a sound mind. When we have these, the spirit of fear has what? No place in us. Psalms 27 and 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I what? Fear. The Lord is the strength of my life. That means I base my life upon his strength and what he's able to do. Not what I... Oh. If I base it on what I'm able to do, I'm going to fail. So I'm going to base it on what he's able to do. His strength. I'm basing my life on his strength. And if I base it on his strength... Who do I have to be afraid of? Who's stronger than him? Remember the bully in the neighborhood? Not even the bully. Remember the toughest dude in the neighborhood and you try to be friends with him because you don't can't nobody whip him. That's my boy. You need some now ladies. You want to bring some Jolly Ranchers to school? Because that's my dog right there. That's my dog. Boudreaux. Yeah. You became free because can't nobody whip him. So you walked around school like just doing stuff. Girl, you ugly. Look at you, boy, you ugly. Ooh, your mama don't like you. What? How dare you say? Boudreaux. See? And you, I mean, you walked around with all confidence. Because you, the, the, cause no, that didn't happen to nobody's school but mine. You know, I was short, so I, my Boudreaux was Tanya. So, <laughs> Tanya would whip you. She would too. So I just never lost a fight. So I'd be behind Tanya just talking. No, she sometimes said, will you shut up? <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Can't nobody whip her. But see... That's what I'm saying. That, that's what this scripture is saying. Whom shall I be afraid? If God is the strength of my life, that means no one else is stronger. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they what? Stumbled and failed. Though a host should camp against me, my heart shall not what? The war shall rise against me. In this, mm, I will be confident. One thing. One thing I've desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, just to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Everyone stand to your feet. Mm. And, you know, we all humans, so we all going to feel fear at some point. We don't have to stay fearful. Because if God's strength, if we build our life based on God's strength, who should we be afraid of? 
Amen. Who's stronger than God? Amen. Anyone dealing with the spirit of fear on any level, I want you to come up up here with me. Just come on. Whoever you are. Just however fear enters your life, whoever you are. And don't not come. Come up here. Just come. Whoever you are. It's a spirit. Fear is a spirit, and it's a spirit that is not of God. You're at a standstill, and your life is at a halt. You don't have to be afraid. God wants you to move forward. No fear. Fear is not of God. And God's perfect love casts out fear. As you come up, if you would just bow your heads. Just bow your heads. And I guarantee you, God is not forsaken you. He's not left you. He has not forgotten you. He has not turned his back and changed his mind. He's still there. He's still doing it. He's going to do it. He's going to do what he said. If you can find it in his word, he's going to do it. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, as adamant believers in this place, Lord. We just thank you, God. We know we're at the end of days now. All the things that your word said will come to pass are coming to pass. And a lot of these things, Lord God, are deceptive. They look real when they're not. They feel real when they're not. But I pray right now that those of us that truly, truly love you, God, that we will not fear what will come. We'll trust your word and trust you as the strength of our lives. And we lay our lives under your strength so you will protect us, so we don't have to fear, so we can stand tall and declare the truth, no matter who's against it, no matter who's camped around us. If they all turn one way, we're only going to go the way that your word says. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, because your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway. Help us to not veer off that road. Help us to not veer off that path. Help us to not veer in our thoughts and in our minds to cause psychological warfare and the enemy getting a hold of our minds and tossing us to and fro and making us doubt things that should be sure. And I pray, Father God, that the roar of the lion doesn't make us run. He walks about and he roars. But the Bible said, your word says, he seeks whom he may devour. That means everyone is not devourable. He can't get us if you don't want him to. So though he may roar, and though we may hear the roar, we don't have to be the one that's devoured. You protect us, Lord. And we hide under your shadow and under your protection until you return for us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You can hug somebody and tell them you're not afraid. Why don't you do that? Because I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid.